behind two hundred dollars in cosplay bucks. They have given prizes to uh, winners at the karaoke contest last uh, yesterday for the uh, Japan animation. They're giving uh, prizes here at the costume competition. And then we're going to plug the volunteers real quick. Um, those who that really doesn't them. sound good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. Um, I mean, so you're shooting them or you're doing something else, I'm going to plug me a volunteer. <laughs> I'll never get another volunteer again. No, actually, actually I meant to be plugging volunteers. <laughs> Those of you who are at the opening ceremony of the Super Run, the opening. They were only 12 of you anyway, so. Congratulations with you for skipping me. Um, and Cole. And now I'm sick of him. You're not introduced yet. Um, Alcon is actually owned by five individuals, which means all this that's going on, it falls down on our heads and things don't go right. Everything else which does go right, from the printed programs through the panels to the people who block you from going to dorks, got your badge and paper for the rest of the day, all those are volunteers. They're the ones who make all kind of run. So besides having them annoy you and help you, um, what we do for them is every hour they volunteer, they give you a raffle ticket. And at the end, they get fun and prizes that nobody else gets from our prize sponsors and from our celebrities. Um, so the, the moral here is you need to volunteer when you're at all kind. Now, by, by show of hands, how many people paid to get in here? How it cost you? Oh, good. Do you mean money or just with our soul? Yeah. That was a nice deal, raised his hand. He had to pay to be a guest. Uh, with my soul. If you volunteer. I'm now asleep, I'm Todd. <laughs> so say we all. Quick, Todd, uh, finish up the announcements, we're losing it. I'm sorry, that was my inside my head voice. I shouldn't have kept that to myself. If you volunteer eight hours in a weekend, you get in free next year. Okay, absolutely free. Absolutely free. And you still get your raffle tickets for fun prizes. Um, if you're too busy to volunteer during the during the all con, there is so much going on, 136 panels in three short days. Um, you can actually volunteer over the summer. We do have events where we go ahead and, and do a lot of volunteer work. I have some volunteers who have 15 to 20 hours volunteer time before all even starts. They come, they get your head, they have a good time. They're all sent to the volunteer picnic. Now, how hard is volunteering? Well, that guy sitting outside the door checking your badges, he just got himself a wrap. ticket. That's an hour. We try not to work you too hard. There's a lot of work we spread it around. So we do appreciate the volunteers. Volunteer tables right outside the door. They're probably all in here, so don't look now. Um, that's the end of my plugs. I'm going to turn it over to Neil Kaplan. This is actually Neil's second time at all time. He's only one of two guests who were invited back. He's, he's very dear for, uh, to us. Uh, and that's sincere. That is sincere. Thank you. Um, so... It might have had something to do with a little bet on the World Series, but... He did pay his own way. So, um, I'm going to get over here out of the way. And Neil, do what you pay us for. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Centennial Costume Contest to Dallas, Texas is all called. <laughs> Judges, at this time, if you please stand, introduce yourself, and explain to the collective assemblage why you are entitled to judge other humans. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Anna. You remember, might remember me from my whole song and dance earlier? Yeah. Um, I actually have been costuming for 10 years. I have a degree in fashion design and marketing, and I work for a uh, costume and fabrication company out of Atlanta, Georgia, called Penny Dreadful Productions. We do film, television, theater, and uh, custom commissions. So I'm going to hand it over. Hi, I'm Gina McQueen. Um, I've been costuming for 13 years now. Um, sorry. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that, and uh, also I will be part of the brand new uh, Star Trek web series that's going to be coming out this summer, and I also work for Cosplay.com, so, and uh, this is my second year here, and uh, it's, I love being here, because you guys are awesome. I love this convention so much that maybe it should be three times a year, so I can come back. <laughs> It's nice to have a pocket-sized judge. I love that. That's why they, they 
climbing out here because I can fit the carry on. I was going to say, full seat, so. you come with somebody else and just stow yourself up above. Exactly. That's good. You probably have more room up there than I have in my seat. <laughs> Male judges, you have a hell of an act to follow. Good luck. <laughs> well, this is going to fall. <laughs> my name is Dan Joplin. Uh, I've been in the business for about 40 years. Uh, I've done everything from costuming, prop designing, to motion picture work. Uh, this is my uh, sixth year as judge here at the Balkan. My name is Dan Joplin. Oh wait, that was you. Hold on, I need to adjust the vertical hold. No, that's just your jacket, sorry. Thank you to the four of you that still know what vertical hold was. God bless you for remembering the past. Uh, and this is actually from the Gomez Adams collection. Uh, my name is Colin Houston. I am a seven year veteran of all con. They keep inviting me back for reasons I can't explain. I am a six year veteran uh, judging the custom contest. I presently can be heard on the United States of Geekdom, www.unitedstatesofgeekdom.com. Uh, you can also visit JediCole.com, which I swear will have other things on it very soon once I, which I, I uh, collapse into a pool from doing all the stuff I do at AllCon. I'm also in charge of game shows at AllCon this year, the Games and Theory Department. And uh, any game show that doesn't have the word anime in it, because that was all part of the anime track, so I'm not trying to take credit for their work, just for the work we had. Look for more of our game shows tomorrow. And I will uh, leave my credentials at that, because I can just go on all day. My name is Jeremy Shore, I'm the officially designated bald guy to balance out this end of the table. And uh, oh, about not to mention glasses as well. But you know, uh, I, my name is Jeremy Shore, I own Titan Comics here in Dallas. I've been selling comic books for about 25 years now and um, been a supporter of all cons since the beginning. This is my first year doing the uh, doing this event. Uh, how many years did you wait to have? Oh, sorry. Did I say that out loud? Anyway, I'm looking forward to the evening, and thank you very much. And if I go ball and drop your glasses, I'm hooked off the team. Please return your seats to their upright position. Put your tray table up and turn off all electronic devices. No. We're about to take this sucker on a flight. Um, yeah, how's it going? Just two minutes and you'll be ready, okay? So, you know, just breathe. Anyhow. Because I am a voiceover actor, which means I don't memorize anything, my script. Uh, plug charity. Charity is a good thing. You should participate. Actually, I, 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 I half kid, but I'm 70% I'm being honest. Um, with especially what's going on in the world today, um, do something nice for your neighbor. Whether it's the person who lives next door to you, or the person who lives in your next town, or somebody who lives on the other side of the world. Um, whether they notice it or not, you'll feel better about yourself for doing it. I, I don't just say that stuff off the top of my head. I spend uh, three hours every Monday teaching voiceover at the Braille Institute for the Blind in Los Angeles. And if that doesn't help kind of keep your priorities straight, I don't know what will. Um, I also have founded a nonprofit called Audio Theater for Our Troops. And as much as I really love Todd at this convention, it's the only one I've ever gone to where I literally go from the airport to the hotel, three days later from the hotel to the airport. I don't even leave. You know, it's like this is a nuclear sub and I'm here the whole time. If I leave, we'll all die or something. Anyway, that was pleasant. Um, <laughs> But seriously, I am here to raise money for audio theater for our troops. It's basically doing, as I like to term it, newfangled radio shows. We basically do movies for the ears, for the men and women in our military service, the soldiers, the sailors, the marines. I'm an actor. I am too, I'm too cowardly to get on a plane and go to Iraq and tell jokes. You know? But even if I were doing that, what does that do for our men and women who are in service in Korea or Germany or 300 feet under the water? So I found that there were lots of actors and writers that felt the same as me. They want to present these people with, uh, with entertainment. And look, 
The fact of it is, if I put a movie up right here, if I put Inception up behind me, you still out of your peripheral vision see that we're in a ballroom. And the men and women in the military service are the same way. When they're on a, on a submarine or an aircraft carrier, they're done with their shift, they're still at work. And when they're watching a the movie, they still see the sides of the ship, they still know they're there. But if we do a radio show for them, if we do War of the Worlds, you know, starring Bruce Boxleitner and Heather Graham, I have no idea where those came from, but what the heck, what a good guess. Um, but the fact of it is that somebody can lay on their bunk and close their eyes for 15 minutes and maybe for two or three seconds there, they're not on the boat. Now I've got hundreds of people waiting to volunteer. We're just trying to raise money to go into production. We are in fact a 501c3, so if you come to my table in the vendor room tomorrow, uh, get a picture, I'll do a recording, I'll call up your mother-in-law and say, Megatron and I know where you live. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> now transform and roll out. You know, or well, maybe you're a, you're a StarCraft fan. You want me to call up and say, Well, I gotta tell you, you look an awful lot like a Zerg to me. <laughs> I should tell you look what I did to the last Zerg I saw. Have a nice day. <laughs> well, maybe you're a Digimon fan. You want Hotbot to call you at home and say, Don't forget to pick up milk this afternoon. Whatever you'd like, I'll do it, as long as it's clean. But it's a way to raise money for the troops. Get a picture from me, just come over and donate, do whatever. We'll give you a tax-deductible receipt, believe it or not. You'll get a signed picture and you'll be able to take that off your taxes. Pretty cool. So, this is when I lay on a little bit of the Jewish guilt. That's, that's what I do so well. But uh, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. I don't know if anybody in Dallas has ever heard of San Francisco. Uh, but they've got a football team out there called the 49ers and a baseball team called the Giants. Yeah, you boo, but I was at a convention in San Francisco three weeks ago and they ended up making sure we had $1,200 before we left town. So Dallas... <laughs> is it gonna be four games to one all over again? That's up to you. That's up to you. Do you want to bring entertainment to the men and women who are serving in the military? I tell people literally, come by with just a dollar. Thank you. I love this man. shined a man's head. And for those of you who are under 17, that just means exactly what I did. I just went... So there you go. Um, I truly do love coming out here. Thank you all for, for uh, being such kind hosts. Now this is when I talk to the contestants. If you're doing an anime costume and I don't pronounce it wrong, right? Tough. <laughs> I do voices in anime, I don't memorize the stuff. <laughs> and you'll get extra points if you come out dressed as one of my characters. So there you go. Uh, don't forget everybody, at midnight, the Steampunk Ball. And that of course is presented by and featuring the Marquis of Vaudeville. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to say nothing, but I read something on Twitter that that wasn't gonna happen. But it is! So I'm going to be here and my dance card is open, so come and dance with me. Alrighty then. Now that we're done with that. No idea what that was. Number one on our list tonight 
is Jason Sanchez and Michelle Duke as Jack Skellington and Sally the Ragdoll from the Nightmare on Christmas. four weeks to put together because we had to go frame by frame and move them each time in between. It was, wow. So let's give our animators a big round of applause. Very nice one. Numero dos. Numero dos. Rebecca Burton. Her costume is the Vampires of Venice. She's Calvieri Girl. Ooh. Very nice. Parasol lace pattern is identical to the episode's parasol. Dress was custom altered from a simplicity pattern and fit, well it says fit to me. <laughs> I swear, it says fit, fit to me specifically. But I'm gonna think it was fit to, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca Burton. Number three. Oh, and this, our next contestant is very serious about this as he's presented us with a middle initial as well. So it's Carl G. Alpha as Chip, the category Steampunk. Very nice. My name is Tim the Smuggler, and I don't want you to get confused. I won't steal any of your wallets or whatnot, and I just want to say quite simply, all right, right, mate, that I, I, you know, I forgot about it all. Don't worry about it. Have a good day. Hey, now if you were told me, I would have done that for you. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, that was cheap, and I'm afraid. So if you kindly give them another round of applause, right? Cheerio. Lovely. Fantastic. Um, uh, uh, I think for this one we will do Japanese. Uh, number four, Garrett Wilborn, Vash the Stampede, Tiger, Maxwell and Howling Crew. The legendary gunman, the humanoid, the typhoon, the 60 billion double dollar man. You know his name? He's Vash the Stampede. Get out! 
Revolution! It's in the anime manga J-pop category. Kiana is a popular Japanese idol who has been challenged with designing clothes that are appropriate for both everyday wear and performance wear. score that you so richly deserve. Number 10, Brooks Powers, <laughs> Androgyny, from Phantom of the Opera. I'm just going to come out and walk around for you. Have you met? Oh, sorry, I was supposed to say that. First of all, you should be applauding not only for the costume, but the fact that somebody's walking around in A flat and A heel. Come on! I'm just really confused right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Brooks Powers, one more time! It's nice when a lady can be her own opinion. I don't even know what that means. Number 11, Skidget? Oh, very nice. I got right on the first try. Skidget, Steam, Pond, Diva, yo. 
my steampunk teammate here to show you how to rock the steam. Number 12, Harlan Ellison as the Invisible Man. <laughs> and uh, number 13, as Chevy Chase from Memoirs of the Invisible Man, Fred Davis. I love this one. Nicely done, Fred. Nicely done. Brilliant. I really see the Chevy Chase in there. Number 14, Ashley Hackett and Cassandra Monroe, Marie Antoinette, the Sofia Coppola movie version, of course. <laughs> Recalling bygone days of decadence, here are two examples of over 60 different costumes worn by Kirsten Dunst in the movie, Marie Antoinette. Come on, another round of applause for this fine work, please. Stunning, stunning work, ladies. <laughs> Number 15, Dante, Lady, and Trish. Devil May Cry. stars when they wear the, wear the dolphin shorts, which was horribly scarring if you saw when Shatner was hosting as T.J. Hooker. No one should ever have to see William Shatner in dolphin shorts. <laughs> Number 16, Jennifer McDaniel as the beautiful but deadly Poison Ivy. Environmental terrorist, truly a misunderstood super villain. She simply cares more about plants and the environment than people. She simply sees it as her responsibility to punish those who defile her beloved plants. This is one super villain that should not, that you should not let catch littering or you. You know what I mean? Don't litter. She be right behind you. Ladies and gentlemen, Jennifer McDaniel, Poison Ivy! Seventeen. Seventeen is pie. And Deadpool from Marvel Comics! Hailing from the northern lands of Colorado, a man who enjoys only working out his glamour muscles! The Merc with a mouth and a 32 pack. <laughs> I don't have much time. I've got a lot to say. I don't have anything to say. 
But if anyone can give me anything to say, I'm just gonna let my mouth do the talking. Where'd that green lady go? She went that away. Let's hear the tech